but there are some fruits and vegetables that have been shown to have more contamination with pesticides. These are just residues um, that have been measured. Um, and then there are others that have shown to have less. Okay. So in terms of that, we'll start with the bad and then go to the good. Okay. Strawberries, spinach, kale, and collard greens, grapes, peaches, pears, apples, uh, blueberries. So there, for me and my kids, there's a lot of heavy hitters in there. Yeah, I eat a lot the, of those. The, the dirty list is harder. Yeah. So keep beating the nail over the head. Where you can go organic, it's more important than potentially where we get to the to the clean list. Um, avocados, for example. And you can kind of see why. There's a big shell on the outside of an avocado. So the part that gets hit with the pesticide, ostensibly, I'm not eating that. Yes. And again, they're porous and there's some absorption, all those things. We're just comparing on a relative scale. Right. Okay, so the things that, that you eat the outside of tend to be more pesticide-centric. True, Okay. Yes. What yes. are some other things that are less, uh, less susceptible to that? Bananas? So on the list, somehow bananas was not on it. That's a little surprising. I, whenever I looked, they had like a, not an honorable, honorable mention, but they gave a little bit longer than the buzzword, like top, top 15 or whatever. Right. And bananas were on there just a little lower. Again, it could just have to do with the porous nature of them or how they're farmed. They're obviously, you know, farmed and produced in massive, massive quantities, even relative to other fruits. But, yeah. um, so the clean 15 avocados, corn, pineapple, onions. Again, we've kind of, we're kind of dealing with a shell yep. on all of these papaya, peas, honeydew, um, cabbage, a little surprising watermelon, um, mushrooms, which is interesting, mangoes, sweet potatoes, carrots. So again, that can at least, again, if you're trying to even dig, dig one level deeper and say, Hey, I'm within organic produce choices. This can at least give you a pretty, pretty basic guide. And in terms of, um, relative to each other, I think pretty solid science between what they determined, um, based on the levels and how much, um, they looked at, they found over, they tested for over 209 different types of pesticides. Wow. Over 209 were found on, on those dirty dozen items. So, and this is, and you're pulling this from, is this the environmental working group? Yes. The, they do the, the dirty dozen and clean 15 every year. Yes. Okay. And it tend, it changes a little bit, but it seems to be consistent themes every single year, mm -hmm. the same sort of thing. Okay. Lovely. All right. So don't eat the outside of a pineapple check. Not a problem. <laughs> uh, definitely try to get organic spinach because I put huge handfuls of that straight into my smoothie every morning. Um, does, can I trust it when it says that it's pre-washed or should I double check that anyway? I would definitely still wash. Them. Okay. Yeah. All I right. mean, at the very least running water actually is a little better than like soaking because there's just at least some Makes agitation sense. to get those things off. I, I, I didn't go through and like parse all the different forms because there's, there's still going to be some exposure. Right. Um, and, and it's controversial because then some of them, you know, you do that, for example, to a raspberry or a blueberry, you have it in baking soda or whatever it is, then you've really kind of degraded the quality of what you're eating. And then oh, does wow. that backfire? So I, I'll let you kind of make your decisions on that. I would say wash them. And I would say if you're even just using water, you're in pretty good shape. Okay. All right. So, well, I, I feel like I'm already, I still feel like I'm swimming in a chemical pool bathtub. <laughs> uh, this is horrifying. Um, my, again, honey, I know you're watching. I'm sorry. I was wrong. I was very, very, very wrong. Um, I have been the, the holdout on so many of these things for so long, just because, you know, and it is hard to feed a family. It's hard to feed a family of uh, six, it's hard to feed a family of six healthy fruits and vegetables that they will eat and not exactly. rot. Um, and then when you factor in on top of that, okay, now you got to make it organic. It's rough, man. It's just it so is. much. Um, uh, having a list like that is helpful to at least know where we need to prioritize and put some extra effort. It's, it's worth the time and effort. Yeah. Because uh, along those lines, it is expensive to eat that way. It is problematic to, if you maybe go so far to not allow certain fruits in your home even, or whatever the case may be. I just know when it's for me and my kids, if I can make those decisions as much as possible, not correcting for the after baseball games and for the nights out and things like that. Cause I, I really don't think that that type of extreme is necessary. Yeah. I, I really don't because it, we're, we're still dealing with kind of a cumulative effect of issues. Now, if you've got a child with some neurological concerns, um, potentially maybe you're on the fence. So you're going to get an ADHD test or diagnosis. 
I get it. You want you want to you want to really kind of batten down the hatches in that regard. Go for it. Yeah. And there's no downside to doing that. Um, I know there's some financial concerns, of course, but there's no sure. downside to going the other way. Yeah. So if ultimately here I I can't prove that X Y Z level and, and like pin this down for you, but I, I to me it still just gives a clear overall picture. Um, again, just related to all of the exposure that we have. Um, and if we know certain things, you know, maybe the plastic bottles, things like that, we know organics at least eliminate some pesticides. We know potentially some organic and, um, you know, hormone free or home horm- no hormones added right. meat, um, can be just ways to begin to limit some of those things. And, and I think when you're dealing with kids, the younger they are, think it changes their parameters versus if it's maybe you and your wife or, and you know, middle-aged at home. I think that those, that the stakes change a little bit. And sure. I think that can help at least make some of those decisions. Absolutely. 